Nigeria is a country which is richly blessed in human and natural resources. When we talk about our natural resources, there is hardly any other country in this world, and I make bold to say so as a Nigerian that competes favorably with us. How well are we harnessing these potentials and resources, especially in the area of tourism? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today as I welcome you to another beautiful time on Executive Discourse, coming to you on the network service of the NTE. My guest on the program today is a man who knows tourism through and through, and he has practiced it on the personal level, at the state level, and of course the national level. He is the Babeto Udwa of Yoruba land. He is, um, well, okay, let me just leave it at that because uh, presently he is the Director General of um, the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation, NTDC. I'm talking about Folorosho. Kuka. Hello, sir. It's good to have you on the program today. Thank you. It's good to be here. And finally, we get to sit down for this conversation. Been a journey. It is. It is. It's really been one. I want to start from your antecedents um, in tourism. And when I look at you as an individual, I always ask myself this question. Why the interest in tourism for you? I mean, you were in charge of tourism in Lagos State at a particular point in time. Now at the national level, you're doing the same thing. So it obviously it's something you're passionate about. But how did you come about getting into this line of business? Mm, interesting question. Um, I think as a young man growing up in Lagos, um, hospitality and entertainment is about life in Lagos. Uh, from a very early age, we, we knew who was doing what in that space, in music, in film, in theatre. And over the years uh, of my interest in, in lifestyle um, never waned and when I got the opportunities over the years um, to do something related to uh, like the lifestyle of uh, entertainment, uh, even when I was in transportation briefly, um, it just grew and as life would have it my late father was also uh, a permanent secretary in the Lagos State Government and he ran the Ministry of Information and Tourism. So I think maybe in some way was destiny being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, it's safe to say that directly or indirectly, you had been introduced to lifestyle. You had been introduced to tourism, even from the home front. Looking at your journey all through, I mean, you practiced, like I said earlier, um, at the state level and now at the national level. What's your opinion of the Nigerian tourism industry? Incredible potential. Some wasted opportunities. If we look at what the structure of our tourism industry is, we've got culture, we've got tradition, then we've got the new mediums of cultural expression, which is outside the mountains and the sand dunes and the rivers, etc. We've got one of the greatest accelerators of 
tourism interest today, which is music. Music. Afrobeat, Nigerian Afrobeat is beating the world. Our film, Nigeria is the second largest film producer in the world, at least by numbers, Nollywood. Our fashion, <laughs> the established designers are copying Nigerian designs, or African designs, but especially Nigerian. Our culinary, I don't even want to go into the jollof rice wars. <laughs> Uh, our religion, our politics, our business, our economy, they all speak to the movement of people around for both leisure and business reasons. So the, the, the potential is huge. Um, why have we not reaped what we should have out of tourism? Hmm. Um, if you don't get the laws right, which is the legal framework that controls a business, it's difficult for you to even expect that business to succeed. Let me just give you an example with that. If you didn't change the communications law, there won't be any MTN. If you didn't change the banking law, there won't be any GTB or Zenith or Access or any of those banks. So in changing the tourism law, the framework is now set in terms of what you can do and what you cannot do. And it's 20, 20, 20, 23 compliance in terms of what's in it. Um, if you look at the merging of the exchange rates, tourism investment in Nigeria is difficult because you have to bring it in at the CBN rate. And when you want to take your profits out, you're taking it out at the black market black rate. Market rate. You automatically, you, f you design your failure mm. into your business at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So. That, again, is a huge plus for, 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 for tourism. Um, I was complimenting the technology around me earlier on. <laughs> and technology is the new tea in tourism. And the, the way, the soft power of Nigeria, especially on social media, that is the soft power of Nigeria. I mean, it's not only about fake news that everybody talks about with regards to the soft power of Nigeria but something positive, like what does this thing do that is good for Nigeria? And I think in tourism, the benefit is, 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 is immense. It, it could be a lot better if we're able to push it more. In the past, it's been tough, but I think in the future, it's going to work. Well, we're all hoping it will work in the future, uh, but presently as we speak, I look at Nigeria, like I said in my introduction, Nigeria is richly blessed. And uh, for one reason or the other, I've been opportune to visit some other countries where people go for tourism. I keep telling anyone that cares to listen, I mean, the one that reverberates most with me and really recently is Seychelles. I look, I, I went to that country and yes, I saw beauty. I saw natural resource, but I also know that Nigeria has a whole lot more than that. Yet, tourism is the mainstay of the Seychellian economy. So definitely Nigeria has the potential to reap a lot from tourism. There are challenges, like it or not. I mean, aside the act regulating the business, how do we begin to manage these challenges? Security, for one, is a major issue. Mm. Is it? Yes, it is. Nigeria is not the murder capital of the world. We kill more people in America a day than we kill in a month. Nigeria is not the rape capital of the world. There's a company south of Nigeria that is. Nigeria is not the 419 capital of the world. Okay, we have a couple of boys in Yahoo, doing Yahoo, Yahoo in a computer, you know, 45 to a room, etc. There are places where they look like business centers, like call centers where they are targeting people globally and defrauding them. But because we don't own any of the media channels of expression, of dissemination of information, we get to pay a price. No. There's no country that doesn't have a security problem. In some countries, they drive over people in broad daylight. In some countries, they go into schools carrying AR-19 automatic weapons and shoot children. We don't have that. We've had a few incidents. We have a regional problem in, in terms of security. We're not at war. 
if I give you a ticket, man, I say, here, yeah, all expenses paid. Go and play in Washington, D.C., where there have been, you know, quite a few incidents, or one of those states where they've had a few incidents. You go. Nobody's demarketing America. But some of these platforms demarket us so badly that we are consumed. And also, we need to speak to the issue of developmental journalism. Not everything that is negative about Nigeria is a, is, is a headline. Security is an issue. It is not a problem. It has been managed as best as we can, and I believe it will be managed better. There are problems of infrastructure, but until you travel in Africa, you're not really aware of how blessed Nigeria is in terms of infrastructure. It may not be the best for a country of 200 million people, but it's not bad. And in the journey we've been on, we'll get there. When you were speaking earlier, you talked about the music tourism, entertainment tourism in Nigeria. We have a lot of these young artists, the David O's, the Burner Boys, the Whiskits, who go out of the country and they are sold out at various arena all over the world, making money for themselves and of course a good image for Nigeria. I look at what is happening out there. How do we begin to replicate it here in Nigeria? Now, I know that you started the, you introduced one Lagos Fiesta, yes. You introduced that in Lagos State. And um, I'm expecting that perhaps other states would have taken a cue from this. How do we begin to replicate what these young men and women are doing outside of Nigeria, back home here? Give them a home. Where's the home of music in Nigeria? National Theatre, just being refurbished. Mm. Abuja Stadium, what is it doing? Mm. The Venodrome. There are huge structures, infrastructure. Some not in good shape, but can be fixed. National Stadium. Those kind of places they go and play. Exactly. Offshore. We have them. They don't have access to them, and they're not in good states. So let's fix them. Let's give music a home. The Picasso in the Louvre in Paris has its status because it has a home. It stands proud on a wall. It says, this is me. People go to see it. We don't give them a home. How do we expect them to play to a national or continental, continental or, or international crowd? Instead of investing in homes, cars, all those things abroad, they can bring their revenues home and start to do things like schools of music, uh, mastering studios, coachings, charity concerts, things that transfer value into the population, into the people. We don't have a museum in Abuja. Hmm. We don't have a gallery of contemporary art. art. I'm speaking because we both work in the same space. Yes. Where is it? Legislature does not have a museum of legislature. Abuja is one of the things that actually disappoints me. When I look at Abuja and I look at the road network, I look at the infrastructure, there's no traffic in Abuja. I come from Lagos. I know what traffic is. Abuja has infrastructure for meetings, uh, uh, for concerts, and Abuja is, was built in a manner that Kaduna, Nasarawa, Zaria, they can all converge here and they're gone in seconds. They can, you can go home. I can't do that between Lagos uh -uh. and Madhub. Uh -uh. You can't. I'm not demarketing Lagos. I'm yeah. just saying Abuja's potential. And I, Lagos has electric buses. Transportation is very key to tourism. And look at our long street roads, the airport and back. You can put electric, you know, 50, 80 seater buses going up and down. There's no, there's no public transport, and I know public transport. Yeah, why? I look at the new cross rock, Katampe mm. Hill, the children's zoo, zoo. Uh, 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 the waterfalls around us here that are quick to get to and come. I look at the ecotourism possible in uh, uh, Abuja. Some people come in and say Abuja is boring, it's quiet. 
I wish I had five minutes. Everybody has a phone. A little smartphone can tell you, can curate your experience. With, Ask it, this is what I want to do. They tell you where it's available. Mm. The days of marketing with pamphlets are gone. It's now for you to ask what you want. And it will tell you. But you've talked about all of these challenges. And the question that keeps coming to mind is, what has your organization done to probably bridge this gap? Yes, I don't expect you to go fix the national stadium for these concerts. I don't expect you um, to build the museum, but perhaps to be a stopgap. What has your organization done? Because by and large, at the end of it all, it's tourism. Correct. Um, in 2017, when I came here, we set up a plan, a roadmap called the Chief Plan. Chief as in corporate governance, human capital, uh, infrastructure, events, and funding. It took six years to change the law. Six years. <sighs> now, what is the human capital that drives that law? Human capital requirements are different. I was raised on pen and, pen and paper. The requirements are now completely different. They're binary, it's computers, it's social media, it's digital presence, it's a lot of different skills that what does the workforce have, both in the public and private sector, and what is required, especially post-COVID. So we've spent six years also trying to do that. You see, if you don't get your foundation right, you can build whatever you want to build on it, it's going to crash. So this year we're invested in getting the foundation right. right. The events, we've curated events that are cultural dancers dancing in a dusty field in the middle of nowhere, or horses charging at each other at some derba to curate what looks like an experience that will make me overcome my fear of going to the north or uh, 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 overcome the inertia of leaving my country to come to Nigeria to experience this thing. Mm -hmm. So we've also been working diligently with the owners of festivals from Agungu to Fala to uh, uh, Osho Oshobo. Osho and you know, things like that, trying to advise them that you need a more, it, it needs to be like, Manchester United are playing Chelsea. Okay, I know that Where Man, you Man U is your favorite team. Used uh, to, I can't I, see I, that. I've seen, I've seen. <laughs> You've seen the box. <laughs> yes. Um, if you look at something like sports tourism in England, you can buy a ticket here for a match in six months. Hmm. Get on the plane, get on the, uh, the train, go to Manchester. Your seat is this seat, 10G. Yes, and that's where it is. And that's where you will sit. No, no, no noise, no, no rubbish. The Durba, Uju Dioba, Osho Oshogbo, Ofala, all those things need to come to that standard for us to even sell it to ourselves before we start to sell it. And one of the things you need, you need simple conveniences. If you take any of the tens of uh, tourism assets that are here in Abuja, which one of them has even a clean public to build a clean public toilet, it's a business. The person that builds it earns. The person that operates it, because it won't be for free, yes. earns. The person that sponsors it, maybe puts a billboard around it or whatever, earns. earns. The days of Nigerians going to some of these foreign favorable destinations, I tell them they're gone. If you own a safari, you're good at it in your country. Come here, we have Yankari. Let's do a joint venture. If you have an airline and you know how to fly, come here. Let's do There's no government that owns. Maybe the Emirates. There's no government that really owns their own airline. Mm -hmm. British Airways is not British. Mm -hmm. American Airlines is not American. Mm -hmm. South African Airways is definitely, not, definitely South not South African. So what am I looking for in Nigerian career? Please, Airpiece, Ibom, Arik. Aero, come together, carry the flag of Nigeria. We support you. Let's start to even open the skies of Nigeria. Mm. 
Let airlines start to collaborate, create packages with hotels, or even just airline to airline, code share. Open the skies to fly to Tanzania. It was almost a day's trip. Hmm. What's the five-hour straight flight? How many flights are there in Lagos, Abuja, in a day? What is the cost hmm. of a one-hour flight between Lagos and Abuja? What is the cost of a one-and-a-half-hour flight between London and Paris? Even if I can't give you grants, let me give you tax breaks so you can grow. grow. The aviation industry in Nigeria must grow. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I think Ogo State has just opened a, 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 a cargo port. A cargo port, yes. I think a lorry has one. Mm. I think Joss has one. I think Kano has one. There's one in Bielsa too. Bielsa. Look at that route. So indeed, the potentials are huge for Nigeria. One more thing. Funding. Mm. Tourism needs single digit money, interest rate. Interest rates right now, commercially, I, you can't borrow money to invest in tourism. Mm. It needs to come down. Uh, the new law has a tourism development fund which will be administered by a board that is separate from the board of NTDA. And I hope that will be able to at least issue some little token grants Having talked so much about, you know, the potentials that we have, I'll still keep talking about tourism because you also reminded me about fashion. Nigerians are fashionable, both men and women. And somehow our fashion has transcended, you know, the, 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 even um, the continent of Africa to the rest of the world. Yet we do not seem to be doing enough in harnessing those potentials for tourism. I totally agree. Um, if you look at the music, Afrobeat, Nigeria's music is the biggest in Africa. I would assume that Nigeria would have the largest awards ceremonies and music festivals in Africa that the whole of Africa comes to. To Nigeria. Like, America goes to California, to Hollywood. Mm. France uh, anchors Europe, etc. Yes. And then London as well in fashion and film, the color, in, in all those things. I think we've had an alternative income in Nigeria. Oil, we just drill it, suck it up, pump it, collect the dollar. I think that has made it, made us kind of complacent about the assets we have. Now where companies like Volvo are saying from 2025, they're not making cars with petrol engines anymore. We're waking up to the fact that something is finite about fossil fuels. Fuel. We may still use it for a while, but something is happening. Mm. How many schools of music, fashion, film, mm. the culinary, do we have in both the public and the private, private sector? sector? But this, this, I don't want to call them gem anything, but this curative youth I made a statement. Mm. I mean, it, 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 it resonates with me. Fashion industry, I've been involved with Adire to some extent. Um, Adire used to be one stiff, starchy thing. There's chiffon Adire, there's jersey Adire, Adire, there's silk Adire, there's soft, you know, cotton yes. Adire, and so many more versions. There's bead, I mean, look at you. It's Ankara, but it's embroidered, it's beaded. The creativity that this allows. Mm. The rest of the world is static, they're still. But the creativity and the vibrancy of this industry comes from, again, the materials that nobody ever paid attention to that they're bringing into play. I, mean, I wear kembe, traditional kembe in Damask, with Danshiki and it's hand embroidered uh, 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 dashiki. Mm. I wear, you know, kaftans, wool kaftans. And I think we could have a few more fashion shows, big ones. Lagos Fashion Week should not be a Lagos Fashion Week. 
to be a Lagos fashion month. There should be one in Abuja as well. There should be one in Port Harcourt. There should be one in Kano, which is uh, 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 Islamically compliant mm. because you have to be sensitive to the uh, uh, religious tolerances of the North. Now, if you can do that for fashion, you can do it for music. You can do it for film. You can do it for food. So are you thinking of a collaboration with some of these states or some of these regions to, you know, really expand the horizon on this? Yes, the, the states have spent the last six years being extremely territorial. Hmm. This is my asset. This is my stadium. This is this. This is that. <sighs> Holding it. But I think the leadership we have now has said, look, I don't care what language you speak, where you pray, how tall or short you are, or the color of your skin. Let's make Nigeria great. I'm hoping that the states will look at it in that context and let us collaborate, which is what the new law speaks to. Let us collaborate in the development of a new Nigeria. I've always had this thought that one day, we will hold a green passport up like this. The way Americans hold yes. a blue passport. passport. The way the Brits hold you know, a rich passport. I don't say the president. My president. My president. I own him. He's my president. I voted for him. I don't say the governor or Mr. Governor. I say my, my governor. governor. Like I say my father my mother. I think that's some switch we need to make. <sighs> Tiwani. It's ours. It's ours. Let's fix it. You mentioned hotels earlier and um, they play a major role in tourism. Like it or not, people leave their um, homes. Definitely they need places to stay. Hotels have at one point in time or the other received a backlash, especially in terms of the security of their clients, their customers. The classification of hotels, the um, facilities that they have, all of those things come together to make what we have. Is the tourism industry in Nigeria, you being at the helm of affairs here, are you in any way involved or do you have a say in the classification, the grouping of hotels or whatever to ensure that, you know, we have safe, secure and standard hotels in Nigeria? Um, there's a very long story to this, but I'll give you a very short one. Then. Please do. We got the new law. There's a Supreme Court judgment that interpreted the very limited mentioning of tourism in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That Supreme Court judgment pretty much locked Nigerian tourism and NTDC in a box. So for years, we've had no revenue, no interference, no say in how hotels are graded. A hotel in Lagos and a hotel in the Outback are not the same hotels. Mm -hmm. A hotel that has a bucket and a cup in the bathroom. It's not a hotel with a rain shower. A hotel that has a pool, a spa, blah, blah, blah. It's not a hotel that just has a, a guest house with just a car park. Yes. So the new law allows us by collaboration. In the light of the pronouncements of the Constitution, which is almost silent on tourism traffic hmm. allows us to say Kwara State or your state, please come. We used to do this successfully before. You can't do it alone or else there'll be 36 standards around the nation. Let's do this together. There's, we had a revenue sharing formula then. Let's look at it. Let's put something together that allows you to have hotels that are two star, three star, whatever star, and they are internationally recognized because it's only a federal body that does this mm. grading. NCDC is not going to carry a stick chasing all hotels around. Eftan, NTDC, the state government, 
must come together in the spirit of let us collaborate to make Nigeria a greater place in tourism, in hotels. Security is a general problem. Hotels have a lot of people coming and going. Mm. Therefore, that is a hotbed. It's like airports. Yes. Good enough you mentioned the airports because I was forgetting that. Yes. I look at our airports in Nigeria, especially our international airports. I'm not supposed to know, but really, my own take here, and having spoken to a lot of people, in fact, I still had a conversation with some people earlier today, our airports don't seem to encourage the influx of tourists to Nigeria with the array of, quote and unquote, security checks. Several uniformed people from one organization or the other. You have the immigration, you have the customs, you have the NDLA, you have the Port Health Authority, you have all sorts. How welcoming can this ever be for tourists? How do we begin to streamline these things? I mean, we have all these, most of these other organizations in other countries where people go for tourism, yet they are not in their faces with barrels of guns all over the place. How do we begin to streamline all of these agencies of security so that they're not in our faces and probably threatening people that want to come to Nigeria? Is the new T in tourism technology? Technology. Embrace it. There's nothing one person who looks at your passport, who scans your passport, cannot share with intelligent computers that belong to all the other agencies. And if an issue, you just step aside. There's, it's an over bloated service. That do you know how many agencies are there for? I'm mm. sorry, I totally agree with you. The international arrival experience is not one to speak about. It can be cleaned up. The towns, the parking, the logistics in terms of how do I, where do I park, how do I get to my vehicle, especially in Lagos. Mm. The, 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 the flow of passengers. Actually, it, it begs the question, does government need to own the airports? In most countries of the world, airports are in the hands of private entities. A kind of government name they will have very stringent uh, 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 reporting structures. Gatwick Airport is run by a Nigerian. Yes, it's it owned is. by a Nigerian. A Nigerian, yes. Nigerians are banned from the Seychelles. Very sad. I am so embarrassed. Yes. Why? One of the things was drugs. Drugs. Tell us the people who were carrying the drugs. I want names. Where were they coming from? Hmm. What kind of drugs were they were they carrying? If they went through Nigeria airport, what airline yeah. were they flying on? I want to know. So that the people that allow them out of Nigeria with drugs, especially all these multiple security forces, that are at the airport, let them explain to me how. I don't want to blame the government of Sicily. Like I said, I'm embarrassed. I, 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 give me some data. Let me look at what it is. Let us take some decisions that prevents other Island states from banning Nigerians from coming. Nigerians, good Nigerians go there. Good Nigerians exactly. take money there. Exactly. They enjoy the economy. So what, what, what did a country, what did we do to a country of 2 million to ban a country of 220 million? 220 million. Let's dimension it and ask these questions and treat them. Oh, these, there are certainly several issues, you know, that are limiting the progress of trans, uh, tourism in Nigeria. But we've talked so much about the NTDC Act. I'm sure that at this point our viewers would even be wondering what exactly are they talking about? Can you shed light on the contents of this NTDC Act? Um, the old law was like a 504 station wagon. The new law is Not like... Not even salad. No, station wagon. <laughs> The new law is like um, a 2022 Mercedes-Benz. So it's come up to speed. Okay. Now imagine operating under such an old law and a new law. What are the things in it? It's not carrying a big stick. It's carrying a handshake. It's saying, come, let's collaborate to do this. In the light of the silence on tourism traffic 
in the Constitution, Constitution. of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is overriding. It has um, a tourism development fund, which is taxes that are collected from the tickets, blah, 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 blah that have not been remitted to tourism related functions to go into a fund that's going to be administered by uh, um, industry related uh, individuals, which is a board separate from NCDC's board. So there's a tourism development fund, there's a tourism development board that administers that fund that will now start to be able to take chunks of money to assist both individuals and states to develop their tourism assets. There's a conference visitors unit, which means we can develop like a place like Abuja, we can really make it uh, focused on attracting conferences like we, you know, we go all over the world for conferences. Um, there's a tourism promotion and investment arm, which is going to be a one-stop shop for people who just want to find out or invest in tourism-related activities in Nigeria. So if you have somebody from uh, uh, Kenya who wants to come here and invest in a safari, mm. he comes there, there's a tie-up that will take him through CAC, FR, uh, FRSC, all those places. Um, we also have the NTB, which is National Tourism uh, uh, bureau that is simply it's like a private company inside a government agency okay. so that just does tour operations so oh. it doesn't compete with the tour operators but we do a lot for government agencies etc and most of the time we actually will farm it out to the private to the sector, private sector. Uh, to do we also now have a say in what you brought in and what you're taking back oh. uh, okay. uh, 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 to see that the revenues are, are balanced and um, just adjusting a lot of old things, old ways. Let me put it this way. This new law is like analog telephone to GSM. GSM. If you compare the old law and mm. this one. Mm. Uh, GSM is not the best thing. There's mm -hmm. still other yes. things that we have had beyond, you know, uh, text messages and voice call. We have WhatsApp, we have data. We're still getting you know, deeply into that. But for now, the old law was 090, this is 0803. <laughs> <laughs> this is 0803. Wow. Well, the program is still executive discuss coming to you on the network service of the NTA. And I have been spending this time with a man that's popularly called Foley, talking about Folorun Show Kuka. We'll take a break. The program will be right back after this time. Don't go away. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You can watch NTA International live on your TV, computer, iPad, tablet and phone. Log on to visiontv.co.uk and click on entertainment, then NTAI. You can also download the iOS or Android app on your mobile devices to watch NTA International on the go, anywhere in the world. NTA International. Your window to the world. Glad to know you're still with us. The program is still Executive Discourse. And don't forget, you can actually watch this program on the go on visiontv.co.uk. My guest is still Foley Kuka, more like as people you know, would love to refer to him. One thing I know, you seem quite passionate about food and I know that um, you've been promoting food tourism in Nigeria. What is this about? I like food. <laughs> <laughs> I like food. I'm sorry. And you have no apologies for it. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like all types of food. I don't like, I don't do sugar, I don't have a sweet tooth, but I like good food. I like cooked food. I like vegetables. I, I like to explore. I travel for food. Hmm. Uh, uh, everywhere I get the opportunity to go to, I look for what is, what is good, and, and, and I try and eat within a, a reason. Um, in the context of tourism, West Africa has food. Um, in terms of the context of our culinary skills and experiences in, in sub-Saharan Africa. 
there's, it is so much deeper. I love Calabar. I go to Calabar. I go to Uyo. Um, I go to uh, uh, Obudu. I go to Boko. I mean, those places, honestly, every opportunity I get to go there, I go there. And I know that whatever it is I'm coming there to do is about the food. Um, if you look at the food in a city like Lagos, Lagos has its own style, mm -hmm. its own, you know, little quiet, you know, you know, shower. Then Lagos has this cosmopolitan, continental food industry. Play, yes. Lagos has the largest catering infrastructure for mega parties mm -hmm. in sub-Saharan Africa. You can't beat us. On top of this, you now have the Indian community who have created a huge fusion yes. ecosystem in food. You've got the Lebanese. Lebanese. You've got the Chinese. If you now throw all this food together, because everybody is now trying to create a unique culinary experience in terms of how I blend okra and curry, hmm. how I make a I, I, I make an ofada jollof rice with not a separate uh, I am uh, rice. no, it's all integral within it. Ah, ah. Sorry, I'm salivating just <laughs> just talking about the food. Uh, it's food time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and it's evolving at such a pace that. Nobody's catching up with, with, with Nigeria with, in terms of the new genres in food that are being created, especially in Lagos. Abuja, when everything that succeeds in Lagos, for some reason, flips into Abuja. Mm. I like that. And of course, you know, we've got a Lagos man at the helm of the Federal <laughs> Republic of Nigeria. So <laughs> Abuja. Abuja is going to get a vibe injection and it's going to stay From for Lagos. Us. Yes, yes, mm. definitely. But how well are we able to translate this, this rich food culture? I mean, you were salivating and you're still salivating, I must say, you know, just talking about the richness of our food. How well are we able to translate it into a source of tourism? I know that you've organized some food fiesta, food festivals in the past. How well have they succeeded or otherwise they've been they've been, they've been good every event you hold is an opportunity for you to exhibit more than just that event if you hold a music festival you can do a bit of fashion a bit of film a bit of food mm. food is the basic one people who come there are going to eat and drink so like we have nigerian flavor the festival will run you know, around the states here. We have local music. Sometimes we have a bit of film. Sometimes we have a bit of fashion. Okay. People come to sell. We aggregate the crowds for them to come and display their wares and sell. So if you want to show the world your food, do festivals of food. And put encourage the film industry, which is the greatest medium of transfer, shoot a movie. Mm. You see their language, you see their fashion, you see their food, you see their culture, you see the look, you see everything in film. In film. And I think Nigerian film is so undersung in that it has so helped project Nigeria, Nigeria's culture. It's not about going to do an advert on CNN, uh, 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 tour Nigeria like uh, uh, Incredible India, India. Malaysia, mm. Malaysia. No. Let's do our own thing here. Let's mind our own business. Let's just do so much of it here that people see, oh, you can suffer. This is not soft. This is okay. They come. Mm. We go to them. They come. We they go come to them. To we start to build a relationship that allows what we are projecting to grow. The South Africans brought their culture here. 1977, first time. Yes. We saw who they were, we fell in love with them, and we started going to South Africa. We were supposed to go to South Africa to do the same cultural exposure to them, for them to know who we are, oh, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But we didn't. All they know about Nigeria to South Africa is our bad behavior. Mm. 
until we go back there to try and retrace those steps, we will always have that problem. And it's just not, it's just not South Africa, it's quite a few countries. I can't seem to um, talk enough about um, music tourism. And I know that um, you introduced the one Lagos Fiesta. I was expecting to have seen maybe a one Nigeria Fiesta here in Abuja. Maybe with support Lagos, from in, in the Lagos, federal in government? Lagos, in Lagos, the private sector funded event with government support. Mm. Um, it's, the, it's the foundation on which a lot of music festivals actually that have happened in Ghana, blah, 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 right now. I, I, I mean, that's how they started. Yes. Um, the dream was to actually create a private sector limited liability entity that we could sell shares to the people of Lagos, that one Lagos, this belongs to you. That's on one side. The second side was that there was one Lagos, there was Love Lagos. Mm. It was also a social political brand that was supposed to endear you to Lagos, irrespective of all the other matters that we speak about in terms of identity. Um, Abuja is not a provincial city. Abuja is the federal capital. capital. So if you start something here, at the very minimum is that you take it to six geopolitical Those zones. zones. That's the minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay, one Lagos Fiesta was a concert in five locations that for five really days simultaneously. That was 25 yes. concerts. Yes. Now try and do six concerts and six geopolitical That's zones simultaneously. That's 36 concerts. The resources required, the logistics, it can be done, we can plan it. It's the kind of thing that I would love to say we should do for October 1. Okay. Uh, where it's one day that means something to all of Everybody. us. Everybody. Everybody. It's one day where it's a public holiday, for sure. It's one day where everybody is in a great mood, for sure. So, can I use this opportunity to speak to the private entities? You know? Please, go ahead. Please. Uh, we can do October 1. We have a template from Lagos. Those that participated in Lagos, please come on board. Uh, from her suggestion that we should go back to the one Nigeria philosophy, we are one. We are Nigeria. We are seeking your help to do something meaningful to Nigerians in this new let's all breathe environment. Let's all breathe environment. Fully Koka, apart from the love of food, I also know that um, you love life. Don't you? Of course I do love no, life. No. But you're the typical Lagos boy. And um, uh, of course, yes, you're the typical Lagos boy and you shouldn't have any apologies for it because I also, you know, own up to the fact that, yes, I'm a typical Lagos girl. So, for you, yes, of yeah. course. So for you, how do you relax? Uh, <laughs> um, I like to eat well. Yes, you love food, um, we've said that. I like to spend time with my loved ones. Um, I like water, uh, I like boating, I have a beach house in Russia that I go to, um, I belong to a few social clubs, mainly water related, uh, Lagos Motorboat Club, Jet Ski Club, I have um, a group of friends called, call ourselves the Browns Table, uh, it's usually about food and drink. <laughs> it's a brown table surrounded. <laughs> um, I have a few close friends who I, who I spend time with and I, I, I enjoy the time I spend with them. I look forward to the time I spend with them. Um, life for me has become meaningful friendships. And that, I think, in the company of meaningful friends, I do relax. I enjoy. What determines your fashion sense? I mean, yes, we've talked about <laughs> you wearing Kembe and Co, and you wearing your uniform my right now, but what determines your fashion sense? Mood. Just my mood. I could have had this interview in Kembe and Danshiki. But you wanted to be the police officer today. 
Um, no, <laughs> um, this was just the, the work mood before this interview and going to continue after, after. this interview. So uh, most of the time, um, comfortable shoes, black trousers, easy iron, short sleeve shirt. I can, I can go anywhere. If I need to up it up, I put a tie and I put a jacket on it. Uh, I like kaftans, long kaftans, as trousers. I at times wear agbada. My piece is my kende and dashiki <laughs> in Damask. Mm. Oh, do I need me? Yes. I'm a Yoruba man, and I, as unapologetic as you are yes. about it, so am I. And I expect everybody to anchor their cultural identity. If you're from the North, wear what makes you happy. South, 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 be calm with it. But let me rep my region. You're repping, Without yes. Any. <laughs> I must ask you this question before we go away. I mean, your father, your late father, God rest his soul, the Babeto. Lagos. I mean, he must have had a lot of um, influence and impact on you growing up. What was life like as a child? Quiet. My father was a gentleman that lived a very beautiful life. It was a life for you to just, at least for me, to just admire, observe, and learn from. It wasn't a life that I would go and shake him in. Just one for me to observe. My mother, still alive, um, a beautiful soul. Yati Orojuri, a mother who never worried or cared about anything apart from making sure that her kids were okay. Great woman. I saw her yesterday. Okay, we're getting sentimental there. Fully Koka, as we take this, you know, finally, I want you to speak to the consciousness of Nigerians as we would always ask our guests to do on this program. Basically, we're talking about how we can improve our tourism potentials, harness them, own them as individuals and as Nigerians. Speak to the consciousness of Nigerians. Nigeria is your cheapest holiday. You don't need a visa to go anywhere in this country. You don't need to buy dollars to go anywhere in this country. You don't need to roam your, roam your phone. No matter what happens tonight to you in Nigeria, you're still in some degree of comfort and control compared to some of the places that you like to go to. The Italians built Louis Vuitton while building their beautiful resorts. Do you know how they did? They spent their money there. So did the French. So did the Germans. So did the Americans. Let's build Nigeria. Let's spend our money here. I'm not saying don't travel, but look at the value for money. The more you spend here, the more of a foundation you are creating for the future of your unborn great-grandchildren. That transfer is what I ask you to look at the possibility of indulging in and building a greater Nigeria, at least within the tourism ecosystem. Thank you very much. Thank you so, so much. Mr. Falorum uh, Shokoka for having been a part of this program today. Thank you. Nigeria is ours. No other person can build this country for us. It is important for us to own our own, either in the area of food, in the area of fashion, entertainment, anything, our cultures and traditions, because we really have very rich ones here. And nobody can promote them but you and I. Let's always have this at the back of our minds in any and everything we do and wherever it is we find ourselves. Because I believe Nigeria is a great country. If indeed you've had a good time with us this week on Executive Discourse, why don't you join us again same time next week on the network service 
of the NTA. You never can tell who my next trailblazer will be. Till then, represent Nigeria and positively too. Bye for now.